<laughs> oh dear, I better turn up the render distance a little more. Let's see. That looks pretty good. Hi right, everyone, Cody Don here, and we're back at the ranch. So I've been kind of looking at the trees today, trying to figure out why some of them burned and were killed in the fire, and then some of them, just a few feet away, were able to survive. And I think the main culprit, the reason that the trees are killed, is this right here, the grass. See, the fire burns along the ground, going from clump of grass to clump of grass, but to burn the tree, the fire has to get at the little twigs and branches. It's like the main trunk of the tree, that's too big. That's got too much thermal mass. The fire going through, it just doesn't have enough time to heat that up enough to ignite. But the little branches, it can. And how does the fire get to the little branches? By going from the grass and using it as a step ladder to get higher up into the tree. So how do we solve this? Well, we clear away the branches from the tree so that even using the stepladder of the grass, the fire just can't reach the little branches. So you see that tree over there has got about uh, four feet of clearance, and that tree was left untouched. This tree right here had branches basically laying on the ground. So this branch would have came up and over here, and the grass is intertwined with the branches, and so the fire was able to go right from the ground into the grass and into the branches and then up the tree. This tree over here uh, does have some branches on the ground, but there was nothing like actually coming out and laying down on the grass. Also, there, it's kind of downhill a little bit, so the fire would have been going fairly slow at this point. So what I need to do is take all the trees that are still alive and look like this and remove these branches. Get rid of that. Clear away this stuff so the fire can't get up into the tree. Also, clearing the branches away will allow the cows to get up underneath the tree and clear the grass right up to the trunk. You can see here where the branches have broken away, the cows have been able to come through and eat all the grass. But over here where there's still branches, the cows can't really reach in there, so they've left the grass alone. So what I'm going to do today, and probably throughout the winter, is I'm going to go look at all of our trees that are still alive, and I'm going to clear away the branches from the ground so that they don't burn in the next fire. And I guess I may as well start with this one. Uh, this one is not bad, but the branches that are here are now dead. You know, like they were actually killed by the fire, and so they're going to be more flammable in the next fire. Now let's get to work. Uh, this juniper wood's a lot tougher than the other trees I've cut. <laughs> All right, one down, probably several hundred more branches to go. <laughs> so a lot of people have pointed out that there's been forest fires in the past, and most of the ones that are happening now are naturally caused. Why is the tree population dropping so rapidly? And I think the answer can be found right here. So this uh, freshly cut uh, branch here, this branch was alive when I cut it, you can see that uh, when it was fairly young, the rings are about a millimeter apart. So that's about how fast this tree naturally grows. But if you come out to about here, you notice a change. The rings are now so close together out here, but they've gone from about a millimeter apart to maybe a third to a fifth of that. So in the last maybe 10 or 20 years, this tree has hardly grown at all. And uh, that usually happens when you've got bad weather, or in this case, dry weather. There, see? Now this tree will be even less likely to burn. Although to really help it, I had to get rid of this tree altogether. Yeah, so it's not so close. Unfortunately, I think I overestimated my ability to use the handsaw. You know, cutting anything more than about two inches is just a lot of work. 
you can probably tell that I'm kind of winded as it is with a little bit of work that I did. So I'm definitely going to go get the chainsaw to finish up this tree, but even if I leave it as is, this living tree over here is far less likely to burn in the next fire. So that's a success, I think. <laughs> so you might remember this tree if you saw the, uh, the ranch is on fire video. Uh, I pulled grass and stuff away from it. There was a, a bunch of sticks kind of on top of it and I threw those off. And the fire did burn through here. You can kind of see there's some toasted grass right there. And the tree itself didn't burn, but it looks like it must have got hot. A lot of the branches got killed, as you can see. It is still alive in the center though. It barely made it. Actually, you can see some of the dirt that I threw into it. You know, that dirt might alone be what saved the interior of this tree from being killed. Something to remember for the future. Clear more space around the tree. Otherwise it won't survive. Like I think I cleared to about here. I should have probably went over there a little farther. Oh well. That's actually rather pretty. <laughs> Side effect of being up in the clouds. So, you remember this tree? There was fire burning here and I actually stopped the fire right about there. But this tree would have been fine anyway. See, no branches down near the ground. This tree right here did have branches near the ground. And uh, there was nothing I could do to save it. There's grass here. No grass over there. I managed to get the fire to go around this spot. And if I hadn't have, this tree wouldn't have made it. But I can't guarantee that I'll be here to save it next time. So let's see if we can prune it up, make it a little bit more fire resistant. Well, my time-lapse camera went dead and I don't know how much it recorded, but there it is. The tree's all cleared up. And I didn't even cut any living branches. Oh, something I wanted to ask you guys. So, the wood on this tree in particular is so much more orange than the other trees, especially in the heartwood here. And I'm wondering if it has something to do with the orange dirt that the tree's growing in. See this? It's very iron rich here. And the wood is orange. And actually, I saw some sap, yeah, right here. A piece of the amber from it is also very orange. It's almost fluorescent. I'm gonna Take this with me. Let's compare it to the sap of some trees that are not growing in orange soil. Okay, it's getting dark. Turn up the brightness here. So let's have a look at this tree. See if I can find some sap. Here we go. Probably can't see it too well. I'm gonna take it over to the light. Okay, so here's the sap from the tree down by the house, and here's the sap from the tree that's up in that orange soil. They're the same species of tree. Look at the difference. So having all that uh, iron in the soil will actually get into the sap of the tree. <laughs> That's interesting. Well, hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time. See this right here? This is no good. No good at all. branch is laying right on the ground and it's gonna burn. So let's cut it off of there. Alright. Let's roll it down the hill.